Okay, so let's start talking about what is GIS. Again, this class is designed for people who've never done any work in GIS, who have no idea even what it is. This is an introductory level class. If you have worked with GIS before, some of this, well, most of this will be uh, review for you, but that's okay. You know, and this class is a good way to review some of your skills. And also in the class, we're going to apply them to biological problems. And so that's helpful as well. But most of you have probably never worked with GIS. And so let's talk about what it is. So in this first part, we're gonna talk about what is GIS. And then the second part, we're gonna talk about what are some of the things we can do, just to give you an idea of what we're going to concentrate on. Okay, so GIS stands for Geographic Information Systems, or Geographic Information Science. I've seen both, okay? It's basically computer maps. And it's taking data and putting it into the computer and then using those data to make maps and to look at relationships. The data that we work with in here is called geo-referenced data. It means it has a spatial reference. It has some sort of spatial component. Another characteristic of GIS is that we have layers of data. So we can have several different types of data and we can lay them on top of each other on the computer and see how they all relate to one another. And so if you can imagine, um, gosh, you guys might be too young to remember what overhead projectors were, but if you've ever seen an overhead projector, imagine if you had some clear sheets that had a few things drawn on them and you laid them all on top of one another and projected it up on the wall, you could sort of look at how all those different layers relate to one another. That's one of the things we're doing in GIS. And so this is an example of several different types of data layers, and they all have a spatial component to them. They're all geo-referenced. And so when you bring them into the software, the software is smart enough to make them all line up because they all have that spatial component. Okay, so there's some terminology uh, some vocabulary that I just want to introduce to you because we're going to be using it all semester. First off, data layers can have features. And so <clears throat> a feature are just the parts that make up a data layer. So for example, you might have a, a layer of uh, cities and each city is a feature. You might have a layer that maps out different rivers in the state and each river is a different feature. And we have three major types of layers that we work with. Point, polyline, and polygon. And you can imagine what each of those are, right? An example of a point shape file would be something like cities. An example of a polyline file would be something that is more like a line, like roads or rivers. Uh, polygon is anything with a two-dimensional shape, a lake, a city block a field, something like that. These types of data that have a definite shape are called vector data. And it's important that you understand what that means because we're going to be talking about vector data and raster data, which is a different kind of data. And you need to understand the difference between the two. And so you see the ones that are pointed out here all have a definite shape, whether it be a point or a line or a polygon, the features have a shape and it can be uh, drawn that way and we call that vector data. Now you could also have data layers that are continuous, things that don't have a distinct shape. And we call these a surface. And so they don't have a distinct shape but they're still very important as data layers. And the way these are represented in the software is a grid of equal sized cells. And within each cell, there is a single numeric value. 
And we call this type of data raster data. And so I want you to make sure you understand the difference between vector and raster data because their work you work with them in different ways and they each have their strengths and their weaknesses. But we will be definitely using both types of data and they can play well together within the software. Okay? So if you look at this last example in this slide, there's no distinct shape. This is a map of the depths of the ocean. And so that doesn't really have a shape. Instead, what you have is you break the ocean into a series of equal sized grids, say a kilometer by kilometer, and then you figure out the average depth of that grid and you put that number in that grid. And so you make a surface that smoothly changes from one value to another. And here's another example. This is uh, something like this, this particular one I think is maybe elevation or whatever. And so you see on the left I've indicated, again, this is basically a grid of cells and each cell has a single value. And then when you bring this into the software, the software can color the cells based upon that value. And so then you can end up with the map like you have on the right. Now, um, another analogy, this is exactly what a JPEG is, right? If you look at a, a JPEG picture that you took with your phone or something, it's a whole bunch of pixels, which are basically square. And each pixel has um, a number associated with it. You know, it has several numbers, but those numbers together give that pixel a color. And so when you have a whole bunch of them together and you step way back, you can see a picture. Same thing here. If you look at this map, it's a bunch of cells. Each one has a number. If you color them or do something to them based upon that number and you step back, you can start to see patterns. And if you zoom in on a raster, just like if you zoom way in on a JPEG, it starts to pixelate. And here you can see when I zoom in, you can clearly see all the different equally sized cells. So that is raster data, which is a smooth surface. And the other type of data that has a distinct shape is called vector data. Um, and then this last one here is just showing what I already said, that we can just give each of these cells a color and that makes the map have some detail. And this one is again elevation, but it could be temperature or rainfall or depth or land use. Um, any number of things where you can take a cell and you can give a single numeric value to that cell. And of course, the smaller the cells, the more detail you have, and the bigger the cells, the less detail you have. Okay, so again, vector versus raster. Vector, think drawing. Raster, think grid. Okay, now we mentioned that all GIS data is geo-referenced. And so that means it all has coordinates associated with it because the software needs to know where to put that data on the planet, right? Because we're gonna have several different kinds of data and we need them to line up. So we need to know where they are on the planet. In an upcoming lecture, we're gonna talk specifically about different coordinate systems. It's very important that you understand how these coordinate systems work. But for now, just realize everything has coordinates. And so the coordinates are a way to find a point on the Earth. And you're probably familiar with latitude longitude. This is the best way to find a single point on the Earth, but we'll find out later. It's not always the best for mapping and doing analysis. So you may remember, with latitude and longitude, longitude lines are long. Longitude lines run from the North Pole to the South Pole. Latitude lines run parallel to the equator. Our GIS data also has background data behind the layers. This is really the strength of the GIS analysis. Because up to this point, we've been talking about the shapes and coloring them and making maps, which is great. But the real advantage here is that in GIS, those maps 
have data behind all the features. And so you can take all that behind the scenes data and see how it relates to each other in a spatial way. And that's really the advantage here. So let's think about a city layer, okay? So let's say we've got a shape file, which is the, one of the types of files we work with, and it's a bunch of points, and those points indicate a different city, right? Which we have here. And you can see that when we put them into the software, the software knows where to put them because they all have geo, they're all georeferenced. And so each of these points represents a city, and we have a nice map here. But each of those points also has a ton of data behind it. And so if we're in the software, we can click on any one of these points and it will tell us the name of the city, the population, the ethnic breakdown, um, you know, the major companies, any, any kind of information that you have that you want to associate with that city can be stored along with the spatial data. And then you can, like I said, you can take that behind the scenes data and see how it relates to one another. That's really the advantage here. So our city layer, which we said is a vector layer because it's got a definite shape, each of those points in there is a feature that represents a given city. And then you have data for each of those points that has all kinds of things, which is what I talked about. It all depends upon what data you've collected, what data you're interested in, what data you've been able to find on the internet, but you can put them all and put them all in one place. That's what GIS does for you. And here we go. This is what I just said. You, you know, once we're in the software, we can click on any one of these. We can make graphs. We can make new maps based upon that background data. So for example, we could change the size of each of these points to be proportional to the population. So you could make a map showing you know, where the larger you know, cities are versus the smaller cities. You can change the color of the points based upon the average per capita income. And then you'd have a map like that you're really only limited by your imagination. Okay, so let me show you an example of what this looks like when we get into the software. Okay, so here we are looking at the ArcMap software and this is just to show you, um, just to give you an idea of what we were talking about. These are uh, there are several different GIS data layers here. Of course, this is Illinois. They're all uh, geo-referenced around Illinois. So if you look over here on the left, this is called the Table of Contents. And this is where all your GIS data shows up. So when you add data, it shows up here. And so you see we have one for uh, towns that is a point shapefile. And we have one that is counties, that's a polygon shape file. We have one for the whole state. And then here we have a raster. So uh, I want to show you how each of these work. First off, you see the check boxes here. If you uncheck a box, you see that that particular layer doesn't show anymore. And if I check the box, it comes back on. And I can uncheck that box and uncheck the counties box. And there you have an outline of Illinois. Now this raster that's underneath it, it's a little bit larger than Illinois. That's why it sticks out. That's all that is. And I can turn them all off. If I turn on, say, the state and the towns, and you can see how, of course, they are mapped correctly in relation to one another. That's what we can do with geo-reference data. And then if you drag one above the other, then it goes on top of that other one. So now you can't see those points, but they're still there. If I turn off the polygon, you see the points are still there. It's just that they're underneath this polygon. And if I drag that back down, you see the points are on top now. And Again, these are vectors, and this is a raster. And so if I zoom in on an area, 
And if I zoom in a little bit further, you can see it's a bunch of cells that are equal sized. And if I want to know the value in a cell, I can use this button, which is identify. And I can click on any cell. And the identify window comes up. And you see the value for that cell is 156. That cell is 156 meters above sea level. And then if I come to a different cell and click on it, that cell is 179 meters above sea level. So you see how there is a number associated with each of these cells. Turn that off. Let's turn on the counties. Now, if you'll notice up here, I got a back button. Just like your browser, you can click back. And you can keep click clicking back until you get to one of the zooms that you were at earlier. And if I again, if I want to zoom in, I can take this zoom in and I can zoom in on Randolph County. That's where I grew up. And I can hit the back button and go back to where I was. Now, I can also hit the forward button and go forward to where I was. So just like your browser. And so to prove to you that this is Randolph County, I'll take the identify button. Now I click on Randolph County. And you see Illinois counties, Randolph. And then you also see that there's a lot of information associated with that. It's not just a map of Randolph County. You have information on the area and the perimeter and um, some of these other things probably mean something to someone, but you get the idea. And then if I turn on the towns, you see a bunch of towns that are in Randolph County. And if I click on one of those, I can see that that is Evansville. And you can see the population when this was made is 844 and it's broken down and you can see the demographics and so again it's not just a point on a map that point has lots of information behind it and so now I can hit the back button and I can go and see all of Illinois and so that just gives you an idea of what the software looks like and what these data files look like and how they contain information and so most of this class is just learning how to make this software do what you want it to do okay now that background data is stored in something called the attribute table and we'll work with the attribute table quite a bit but when you're in the software you can open up that attribute table and look at this information and work with it so now let me give you an example of what it looks like when we look at this attribute table data okay uh, you will recall that I said each feature in a data file has some attributes behind it and those attributes are stored in a table and let me just give you another example here I'm gonna zoom in on Randolph County again and I'm going to use the information button and I'm gonna check on a city here's one and this is Baldwin Illinois all right and again you see all the information the population the demographic breakdown and I got that by clicking on it with the information button but I can also find that same information in the attribute table and so if I go to that shapefile the one that's got the town points and I right click and I choose open attribute table then I see all kinds of information here and if you look at these headers you see I gotta scroll over a little bit you see names and the type and here's that all those values and uh, if I scroll down to Baldwin 
It's right there. And you see there's the same values we just looked at. So those values are held in this attribute table. And you can also click on each individual feature to get that information. You'll notice when I clicked on a row here, you see that that particular value got highlighted. Um, if you want to select many features, you can use this Select Features button. And if I wanted to select, say, Baldwin and some of the other towns there in Randolph County, I could do that. And I selected the county too, but that's all right. And so let's say I wanted to look at all those attributes. And they're all selected here, but of course I got every town in Illinois. So what do I do? Well, I come down here to just show selected records. And here you can see those are the four towns that I have selected, Baldwin, Coderville, Sparta, Tilden. And you see all that information behind them. And so that's, again, just how we find the information we need in these data files. Okay, so that's the first part. That's trying to give you an idea of what is GIS. In the next part, I'm going to talk briefly about what are some of the kind of things that we can do with GIS. And I'm going to concentrate specifically on some of the ways we use this in biology. So stay tuned for part two.